I've been testing the Arcitec Invicta wheelbase for over 6 weeks now and I'm 100% certain that that thing gave me superpowers. I'm vengeance. Okay, 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 not that kind of superpowers. Does he even have superpowers? No. It's more like the spider sense. And with that, welcome back to Overtech.gg, my name is Champion Joe and I welcome you to yet another episode of Joe's Hardware Corner today with the Azatec Invicta wheelbase which sports 27 Newton meters. Yeah, you heard that correctly, a 27 Newton meter direct drive wheelbase from the Danish hardware house in Aalborg featuring a 22-bit encoder resolution, 6x25 programmable RGB LEDs and comes at a heavy weight of 11.3 kilos. This is... I can barely lift it up. This is a hefty boy. And it's not only heavy, it's also pretty long with a total length of 33 centimeters. But in the end, I have to say the design is pretty compact and this one will tuck away quite nicely underneath your monitor, not blocking your view in any way, shape or form. Paired with that, we also have a look at the Forte wheel and the wheelbase front mount, which we got provided by Azatec for this review. And I also got the Azatec Invicta pedals, which I'm currently testing right now. So if you don't want to miss that review, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notified whenever we upload. With a price of 1550 euros, this is the absolute top shelf when it comes to direct drive wheelbases. But how does it fare? Should you consider this for your final upgrade? Let's dive in and have a look. When you order one of the new Azatec wheelbases, you get basically everything you need to run it. On stock, you get the USB cable, you get the uh, on and off switch, the emergency stopper, and everything else you basically need to get this up and running. It also comes with two washers that are usually down here, so you can bottom mount it as well. As you can see, there's some space for washers. I I decided to get them out so they won't rattle when I mount it at the front. It has a plastic cover here in the front which you can uh, unscrew with those four screws then take it off and get the front mounting plate here, screw it back together and everything is running. If you use the front mount this Azatec wheelbase is not having any flex. It's really incredible how first of all how well it looks and second of all how sturdy the whole construction is. I was of course thinking that the Arcitec in uh, Victor wheelbase was so heavy that mounting it directly here at the front would lead to it yeah dipping at the at the rear end but it didn't. As I already said there's no flex whatsoever and it's the perfect mounting solution for this wheelbase because that's what it was designed for. One special feature I really loved about the Azatec Invicta wheelbase are its buttons, the on and off switch and the emergency stop. That feeling you have clicking those, you could click that the whole day, not driving a single lap and it would be more than enough to have fun. Has to be among the my most favorite buttons of all time. One important thing to keep in mind when bottom mounting the Invicta wheelbase is that the spacing of the washers down here is a bit special. It's sadly not the same space that Fanatec uses which makes this wheelbase not compatible with a whole lot of wheelbase mounting solutions that come with sim rigs. So keep that in mind, um, have a look at the Fanatec homepage for the measurements or you will have to drill some holes I suppose. Also pretty important when buying a new wheelbase is the software, so let's have a look at that as well. And here we are, this is the Race Hub software. As you can see here we can calibrate everything regarding Azatec from pedals to steering wheel, but let's start with the wheelbase first. This is the first screen you see, the center calibration. Um, I know you can't see my wheel at the moment, but I pressed this button um, and it's not centered at the moment. So I will center my wheel on my position. As you can see, it's <laughs> totally wrong here, but if I press set center, it centers itself um, pretty basic stuff. Then you say um, press save to wheelbase and after a few seconds, everything is set up correctly now. 
Then the uh, big one, the talk screen, where you can uh, fiddle with the different sliders and get the wished effects out of your wheelbase. And just let me tell you, the effects that Arzatec has put on the Invicta wheelbase are really genius. First up, steering range. As a trucker fan, if you are into trucking simulation, you will happily see uh, more than uh, 1080 degrees of rotation. No, it's 1440 degrees of rotation, so perfect for everyone who's sim racing at day and trucking at night. I for myself run 900 degrees, I think that's more than enough. And there's some other smaller effects you can uh, put in like bump stop hardness, so how hard the wheel hit like a bump at the, at the end of its rotation, which is kind of nice. Then you can have a range and set it to maybe 10%. So you can extend it 10% over the set limit. So the wheel rotation then stops at 900 degrees but the actual wheel can go 10 degrees further, which is kind of nice. And then you hit the bump stop, which can be hard. It can be medium. So that works perfectly fine. Next is the high frequency limit with which you can yeah, eliminate some higher frequencies. For example, in Automobilista 2, I noticed some yeah, rattling sounds uh, when going over curbs on the Nordschleife. Put it from no limit to 3300 hertz and this eliminated it. So a uh, useful feature if you experience some sounds from the wheelbase it shouldn't make. Then basic stuff, damping, friction, inertia and cornering force assist, which is really useful in combination with the overall force. The next two are about yeah, how fast forces can change within the force feedback. The more important one of the two being the torque acceleration limit, which is super high. 9.4 Newton meter per millisecond is really crazy. So this thing can switch on you in seconds and can transfer forces um, from left to the right in in a really short time, which gives you so much control. I really love that. On the LED, you can uh, change the uh, brightness and also the color of the LEDs. And that's basically it for the wheelbase. Moving on to the steering wheel. Here you can also set the uh, brightness of the buttons and set colors for all of the buttons. So you could say, let's have one side in red and one side in uh, green and the middle in uh, orange maybe and have it fully customized in overtake colors really gives you this freedom of customization i bet many of you will dig then there's shift lights so you can select if the shift lights go from left to right from the center to the side or side to the center you can customize that as well change the colors and what i really like are the flag lights so the leds in the middle of the wheel will show you if there's a black flag, a double yellow, a yellow blue flags, uh, green flags and even the checkered flag, which is kind of nice, a uh, little nice touch at the end of the configurable stuff. Overall, really good software and a whole lot of effects that really make this wheelbase special. Is a 27 Newton meter wheelbase overkill or something you should aim at, especially as maybe your last upgrade ever to your sim rack? Overall, driving with this was a lot of fun. Uh, I had a blast at least. And I have to say, I never had a wheelbase that gave me so much information about what the car is actually doing. And this is what I meant when I said that that thing gave me superpowers because it actually gave me superpowers. You actually feel every little detail the car does in ACC and I was really really happy how connected I felt uh, all of a sudden with the game. But this doesn't stop with ACC. Um, I had superb results with this in Assetto Corsa, also in Automobilista 2. It's pretty nice to drive. So overall pretty pretty happy with the driving experience overall and what do i mean with the yeah spider sense the tingling the superpowers every time i had oversteer that thing communicated that to me so quickly so fast that my reaction times felt outerworldly yeah you feel like you you were bitten by a radioactive spider because you know what's happening before it even happens it's really hard to spin with a wheelbase like this Will it make you a better driver 
I don't think so. Will it make you more consistent and spin less? Probably yes. Build quality wise, I like the design. I dig it, especially with the LED strips. It really looks superb. But what I don't like is that it has a lot of plastic stuff around it. Also the aluminum uh, housing. It doesn't look very high quality and also here with the quick release there is some plastics or at, le at least it's i don't even think it's plastics but it looks like it uh, and this part of the front here is definitely made out of plastic and yeah i i don't think it looks like a 1500 euros product but it drives like one so not the biggest fan of um, the materials used and how they come together but um, definitely pleasantly surprised with what's inside and how it's to drive and then there's the genius quick release we of course also have to talk about and this is where the forte wheel also comes into play here you can see it i think it's a yeah beautiful design and its biggest plus is one the quick release and B, it's ergonomics. But let's talk about the quick release first. This quick release will also have an adapter for other wheels, so the wheelbase will be compatible with different manufacturers, which is just superb in my eyes. But um, this design is really clever. You have this hinge over here, you just um, press down, and after that, you can use one hand, basically. And there you go. Also, we're firing up the wheelbase takes just a few seconds and then you're ready to go. One of the best features of this uh, wheelbase or uh, system overall, the quick release, super easy to use, super easy to handle and yeah, absolute game changer, the best quick release I've ever seen and something I'm looking forward to, to, to maybe getting even for some other wheels I own. Let's talk about the Forte wheel. I really adore how that thing lies in your hand. As you can see, I can reach each of those buttons with my thumb uh, holding the wheel. It's a bit difficult to show you because I have to twist, twist my hands a bit. The only thing where I have to get a hand off the wheel itself is when I want to use one of the knobs, which is okay. But everything else is perfectly placed and super comfortable to use. That's really one of the strongest points you can give to a wheel. Because not only are the buttons in perfect placement and feel nice to the touch as well, by the way. Really awesome buttons that have a good click. So I really like the design. I think it looks good. I would say there are more beautiful wheels out there. I don't know if you agree with me or not. That's a highly subjective uh, thing to say. But it definitely doesn't look like a toy doesn't feel like a toy it's really high in quality and has some of the best buttons in the biz right now which is really awesome pedal shifters overall i really like how the shifters feel they are really precise never had it uh, misfire or anything so when i press it it registers and one big thing not only that they are mag uh, magnetic which is always the best way to go with um, shifter pedals but also, I don't know if you can hear it. For magnetic shifters, they are relatively quiet, which I really like. Silent, but still super precise. Yeah, I like that. So the Forte wheel, if you don't have the Invicta wheelbase, but another wheelbase from them like the La Prima or the Forte wheelbase, I can definitely recommend it's um, a, a job well done. As I said, not the best wheel uh, I've ever seen, but a pretty good one. Last point before we come to my final verdict, the grips. I know that's really super subjective and maybe you will like them, but... And I also already talked um, with Azatec about this. They come with rubber grips, which won't get destroyed by your sweaty hands and are easy to clean which is kind of nice so those will have a long life and is something the real race drivers also use but especially without any gloves on they are not really comfortable to to, to the touch uh, in my eyes they're like a bit sticky um which gives you grip i suppose but yeah it's not 
not something I really dig. I would love to have some uh, leather options um, on there. Not Alcantara, but leather options would be nice. One uh, positive thing here, uh, they are actually screwed in. Hope you can see that here on the top. And then there's another screw there um, behind the shifter pedal. And you can just swap them out in the future for other grips. And if there will be a leather option in the, in the future, I will for sure um, um, change them. Because I'm not a huge fan of touching those. All right, Invicta wheelbase, for the wheel rim, are they worth the money? I would say yes, they are. Of course, that's really pricey, hefty uh, and heavy uh, sim racing equipment. But if you're looking for your final upgrade, the last stage in the evolution of your sim rig, this might be the best or the, the right choice uh, for you. I don't think you will find any other wheelbase that has such a direct and quick reaction time that will give you so much information on what the car is actually doing on track and maybe even find a wheel that is better suited for this because it fits really well with GT driving, with Formula driving and the pair of them is just a good combination to have mounted to your rig. And if you're also interested in the Azatec Invicta pedals, as I said earlier in this review, subscribe to the channel because I will review the pedals next and give you my yeah full on review on them. They are pretty stiff so far, so me as a Sox driver will definitely have a few words to say about those, but I will do that when the time is right. But for now, you can also check out the review of the pedals I sport as a daily driver, the new simulation Evo 1. Superb pedals, check the video out here. But thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time around. Cheers!